Is it the end of the bull market? I'm asking Gary Wagner next. I know it's been a bit of a hiatus and everyone wants to hear from him. Gary, thanks for being back with us today. My pleasure as always. Gary, I'm happy to be back in home base as well, but I'm coming to you with a big question today, and it is, is it the end of the bull market for gold, Gary? In gold? Well, you know what? That's an interesting question. I think that the, the short answer is no. I believe that the bull market will continue, and I have a couple of reasons that I believe that. But we obviously have been in an extremely extended correction. It almost seems that there's not enough news right there now, Gary, to cause a move in gold. What do you think of the period that we're experiencing right now? What would it take for a move to happen? Well, I mean, what we're seeing in terms of a technical basis, and I'm a technician, is that for the fourth time, we've actually hit this bottom, uh, I'll call it a band between 1520 and about 1560. And on each occasion, it has bounced off. The issue is that each time it bounced off, the first two times it hit 1800, hit 1800 a second time, but this last time it only hit 1700. But I really think that we have to take a, a step back when we consider the gold market and gold prices and look at what we've just witnessed. We've seen gold go in the last, what, three or four or five years max from about 900 to 1900. And it ran because of some fundamental data out there that caused people to believe that as you pair uh, the currencies against gold, those currencies were becoming less valuable. That's a tremendous move. And what happened was, obviously, the market got overheated at 19, 19, 20. It went up too much, too fast. And so it kind of like a teeter-totter, it kind of evened itself out to now where it's kind of finding its base between 15 and 1600. My sense is it will find that base, I believe it will hold, and eventually start moving higher. So Gary, what causes you to think there's still fuel in the tank and we're nowhere near the end? Well, when we take a really long-term historical view of gold, it's my belief that gold has really never changed in value. It's throughout the ages it hasn't. Um, societies have put intrinsic value on it, but when you base it or pair it against another currency, it's the currency that moves, not gold. And to give you an example, if you had a $20 gold piece back in the 1800s, you could go anywhere in the country and to be able to go into a town and get a nice new suit, have a steak dinner, and then stay at one of the better hotels with that $20 gold piece that was one ounce of gold. Well, today you could take that $20 gold piece, one ounce of gold, worth roughly $1,600, and with $1,600 get a good steak dinner, stay at a fine hotel, and buy a very nice suit. So that over the last 100 years, 150 years, what has really changed is not the value of gold, but the value of gold as it's paired against the currency. So the question we need to ask ourselves, do you believe that the governments that are uh, printing fiat money are going to do a better job than they have been? Are you suggesting that the strength of the U.S. dollar index is the culprit behind the stagnation in gold now, Gary? Well, there's a couple of factors. One, the strong dollar absolutely weighs on the price of gold. And, and one of the things I find invaluable is the Kitco Gold Index, which always gives um, our viewers as well as uh, traders globally a real sense for how gold is moving in reference to buying or selling and in relationship to, to the dollar. But the other thing is that we were in the doldrums from 2008 and up with economies going into a recession. Well, it does appear that the first signs are there that these economies are turning around. And that is, my belief is that is putting uh, equal pressure on the gold market. So a strong dollar, strong economy. Gary, and before we get to your insert, that's something that fascinates me. And I'd like to ask you, if I'm bullish on the US dollar, does that automatically make me bearish for gold? Not necessarily, but as long as you are buying gold in dollars, US dollars, as the dollar gets stronger, it has a significant proportional effect on gold. But gold can move up and the dollar can move up because of buying. So 
you're not betting, they're not bets that are going against each other, but they do have a, an effect on each other that's a push-pull. It, it's not symbiotic. Gary has always good thoughts. Let's get to your insert. Okay. You know, one of the questions that I have been asked is whether or not the bull market is over. My short answer is no. I personally don't believe that the bull market, the run is over itself. And what we have been looking at are points historically in which we have had similar scenarios or scenarios that were close to what we're looking at now. Realize that we have had these series of descending tops. We have had this flat bottom. It's really a one, two, three, a quadruple bottom at this point. When we look at this market itself, we have this protracted correction that really began, what, September of 2011 up to current. So it's, it's, it's been really in play for over a year. Have we ever seen a scenario like that? Well, we have seen a scenario where it's been almost a year, and that happened right here in 2008. Now, one of the characteristics that is very, very different about this retracement as compared to our current retracement or correction is really the tact or the angle, where this was, as you can see, almost a channel down. Here we get the flat bottom and a descending top. There is a difference there. However, when we look at the timeline, in other words, how much time did it take? And the easiest way to do that is to kind of blow this up here and move it over. You can see that as this market moves up, of course, this is a weekly chart. You've got, uh, in terms of its uh, time parameter, and we can really ascertain that, you reached your top really at around March, middle of March here, and then the top, of course, March 28th, and it really didn't hit the bottom until October 17th. So you had a good period of time in which the market pretty much went in one direction. Now, if you were just to look at that, and you, you could easily construe that the bull market's over because realize the market had run from about seven $700 all the way up to $1,100 and then came back down to $700 here. So if you look at these lows right in here, 644, market comes down to lows of about, what, uh, six, 692, even 685. You could have easily construed at this point that this run that we saw was over and the market was probably headed back to six or five hundred dollars. Of course, that wasn't to be the case as we look at the market today. My point in bringing this up is that many times when the storm looks the darkest, it is just prior to the conclusion of the storm. Because what we're seeing right now, this extended correction could either be transpiring in one of two ways. Now, I've got it listed as a double ABC, ABC, X, ABC. The other possibility, as we have talked about, although I haven't talked about it recently, is that we're still in this really descending top and flat bottom series of five legs and that's a little bit different because if you do that the first time it touches is up here which is the x so you, you really what you're going to get is one two three four five and if that's the case we are now in our thrust we will know that by virtue of how it crosses here but the key is this whether it's a double abc or it is our descending top flat bottom the beauty is that in either case if we are correct we will probably enter some sort of an impulse phase and when we enter that impulse phase we will have conclusive technical evidence if and when the market breaks above this cross now another interesting interesting observation to me is the fact that if we do a fib retracement of this particular impulse phase, meaning one through five right in here to C, we get a perfect 76, a very, very deep retracement from the point at which it started about 556 to the top about 1075. And that puts us at about, I think it's a 678. And it's a very, very deep retracement. When we take a look at the most current trading activity in the marketplace, let's go ahead and, and pull that over here and let's put up another FIB retracement. You will see the fact that in terms of this current correction or retracement, it's nowhere near as deep by any stretch of the imagination. And on this one, we're basically going from 1074. It's in essence starting from the same place this concluded, meaning this bottom right in here. 
And when we take a look at that, in terms of the depth, this is 38 and this is 50% right here. It goes almost to 50%, but a little bit shy of that. Nowhere near as deep of the type of correction as we witnessed when we saw our record tops back here in 2008. So, is the bull run over? Well, it certainly could be, but my sentiment is this. If the fundamentals which have been driving this market over the last decade are still intact, then we have to believe that so is the bull market. As I said, I don't think it's quite over yet. I could be wrong on this, but I think that there is definitely more room to the upside. As always, Kitco viewers that wish to dive into this topic a little bit deeper, I have put some bonus content up on my website free of charge for you to take a look at. And I've just put up a image of what the first page of the website looks like, thegoldforecast.com. And you notice this little C, I'm going to circle it now. Go ahead, click that C, and it will allow you to view the bonus content for this week. Again, is the bull market over? I think not. Gary, as always, very educational. Thank you for speaking with me today. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. And thanks for watching this edition of Chart This. You can email me any comments or questions at newsfeedback at kiko.com or follow this conversation on Twitter at Daniela Cambone. Thanks for watching.